invite you to rise and turn to page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have not done, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We shall be deserved. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a call and instrument of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Praise the Lord, all the nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who wor- worship, for all who wor- here worship, let me begin. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and pray. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend this gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, grant us to know your Son, Jesus, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may boldly confess him to be the Christ and steadfastly walk in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Old Testament for the 12th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah, the 51st chapter. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, that I might bless him and multiply him. For the Lord comforts Zion. He comforts all her waste places and makes her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Give attention to me, my people. Give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the people. My righteousness draws near. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the people's. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Our epistle lesson is from Romans, the 11th chapter. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is the good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, in individual, individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I invite you to rise to the reading of the Holy Gospel and the singing of the Alleluia verse. The Holy Gospel is written according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory 
Now when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated and we continue by singing the hymn of the day, Built on the Rock, hymn number 645.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Not to beat a dead horse. The world we live in is sinfully sick and dying. And it's scary at times. Just think about all the news you've heard over the past week. Riots, looting, deadly disease, viruses killing thousands. That's not even taking into consideration all the other sickening garbage we're exposed to on a daily basis. Promiscuity, adultery, greed, covetousness, theft, murder, and the defaming, even criminalization of anything that even remotely resembles Christianity. All socially acceptable and endorsed by the biggest celebrities and athletes and career politicians. Being a faithful Christian in the midst of all this deadly sin is lonely. And often it is a dangerous existence. I'm not, the I'm not alone in thinking this, but it sometimes feels like it. Can you relate? And yet, is any of this terrifying sinfulness new to humanity? Honestly, are you that ignorant in your pride to believe that no one else in all of history has ever had to deal with immorality, a society that embraces it more and more, danger from violence, terrorism, disease, viruses, and disobedience to God and His word of truth? We're the first ones to ever have it so bad? This is why I love the words of our Lord in the Old Testament. Life remains a very scary and evil place, and things do not look to be getting better anytime soon. In fact, the more we read, the more we watch, the more we listen, the more we are faced with the fact that things are only getting worse. Whether we're talking about the nation's fomenting uh, tensions with their neighbors or international communities, whether it be violence, poverty, or political correctness, or greed, or apathy, or unbelief. Fewer and fewer people seem interested in sitting at the feet of Christ and listening to him, listening to him speak to them by his unchanging word of truth. But this is exactly what the world needs, to hear and listen to the word of the Lord in these turbulent and chaotic times. Bless you. Sadly, in these times of what can be described as chaos and uncertainty, many people seem to be turning to anyone and everything but Christ Jesus. Turning everywhere but to His means of grace, the only source of truth and comfort. In reality, such has been true ever since the fall into sin. You see, man has looked for truth and comfort everywhere but to Christ and his word. And such blind wandering is a very real problem that only leads to and produces greater problems in life. Few people faithfully focus on the truth. Hear once again the word of the Lord. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation, for a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the people. My righteousness draws near. My salvation has gone out. My arms will judge the people. The coastlands hope for me, and my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look to the earth beneath, for the heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. Now God first spoke those words thousands of years ago to the faithful Israelites as they were trying to deal with the sin that had surrounded and infiltrated their ranks. Their relatives to the north had already been swallowed up and conquered by the Assyrians. And things weren't looking very good for them in the southern kingdom. Their religious and political leaders, they were bad. They were calling for appeasement to try and win over the enemy. These leaders were calling for and enacting policies that were pleasing to the very people who were out to destroy them. 
but not pleasing to God, who created them and provided for them and redeemed them. Give attention to me, my people. Give ear to me, my nation. This is what's missing in today's dying and scary world. And the sad reality is that God has been making this truth known from the beginning. But sinful man has been averting his faithful gaze to things other than God and his word. And just think about it. Adam and Eve looked at all the fruit that God told them not to eat and decided on their own that he was holding something back from them. They disregarded what God had said, what he had given them to be for their good. They took their eyes and ears off of the Lord. They paid more attention to their own hedonistic desires, their selfish wants and pleasures and egos, than to God and his word. And it's been more of the same ever since, with people more interested in worldly things, in worldly concerns that matter not one bit when it comes to matters of salvation and righteousness and justice and faith and hope and true peace that surpasses all understanding. Fellow redeemed, heed the word of the Lord. There's nothing new under the sun. The world since Adam and Eve's sin has been a scary, miserable, sin-filled place. Ever since they turned their ears and their attention away from God and fell headlong into the grave of sin, but even in the midst of all this sorrow and struggle, you and I, we have every reason to give thanks. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Behold, it's finished. These are promises from God. Promises that once and for all, for all time, for all people, He has come. The long-awaited promised Messiah is here. That's our joy. He is our peace. Here in our never-ending and unfailing, or He is our never-ending and unfailing confidence and assurance. Even as the world continues to worsen, just as the Lord prophesied it would, heaven and earth will pass away. The earth is wearing out like a garment. But my word will by no means pass away. Maybe it seems too simplistic. We often insist on making things more difficult than they need to be. There has to be more to it, right? Surely you haven't read all of the fine print, Pastor. Nope, it really is that simple. Right here and right now, in the very midst of all the fear and anxiety that people are experiencing, in the midst of all the violence, despair, and hatred, and uncertainty that surrounds us, we possess that which is sure and certain, the peace of Jesus Christ. Here in his word and sacraments, through his very real and tangible means of grace, he bestows his grace, mercy, forgiveness, and strength. Such are the reasons that we can give thanks in all circumstances, not just today, but always. For Jesus announces that I am with you always, even to the very end of the age, the very ends of the earth. Take and eat, take and drink for the forgiveness of all your sins, for my peace that surpasses all understanding is yours. Fellow redeemed, this is what it's all about. This is what it's always been about. Fear, love, and trust in God above all things. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. Christ and his peace and his means of grace are the unfailing and unconditional answer. Give attention to me, my people, God says. Give ear to me, my nation, my people, my children, my righteousness, that is, my justification draws near to you. My salvation is forever. I am with you always. For better or worse, through thick and thin, in good times and in bad times, in sickness and in health, in feast and in famine, in riches and in poverty, in life and in death. 
I am with you always to deliver you and to save you. My righteousness, my justification will never be dismayed. It will never fail. It will never change. It will never wear out. It is finished. Once and for all people and for all time. I know what it means to strive to be faithful in a world that is increasingly hostile to the one true faith and to him who our faith clings. I'm not saying that if we would only pay more attention to God, then all our troubles will disappear, that life will be without illness, danger, or hardship. No, we still live in a fallen and sinful world. And in fact, the Lord never promises a life free from hardship at least not on this side of heaven. In fact, he commands us to remain vigilant, to stay awake and be on guard, because the devil and his minions, and they give minions, those cute little yellow minions, a bad name, they are always prowling around, seeking to devour and silence anything that even hints of Christ and his all-redeeming sacrifice and victory. So contrary to popular opinion, Paying more attention to Christ and his means of grace, that is, exercising your faith, is not going to make your problems go away. But so be it. What do we have to fear? God's people have faced danger every day, although they often do not perceive it. Christ lives. The victory's won. You were a possessor of all those blessings through faith in Christ. And whether you live or whether you die, you already belong to Christ. You are a baptized, a redeemed heir of heaven. That means you're a true child of God Almighty. Now, I can think of no better way to, to end today than with the words of Martin Luther that he penned in his great hymn of faith. For the truth he joyfully proclaimed then is our truth today, and it is the eternal, unchanging truth of the gospel. Something that will never fade or wear out, go out of style, or become obsolete or ineffective. Though devils all the world should fill, all eager to devour us, we tremble not, we fear no ill, they shall not overpower us. The world's prince may still scowl fierce as he will, he can harm us none. He's judge. The deed is done. One little word can fell him. That one little word is Christ. The incarnate word. He is your life. He is your hope. He is your peace and he is your salvation. Take there our life, goods, fame, child and wife. Though all these be gone, our victory has already been won. The kingdom, ours remaineth. It is true today, as it was for Luther 500 years ago, for Isaiah 2,700 years ago, for Adam and Eve at the onset of time. And it will still be just as true and effective at the end of time and for all eternity. Faithfully focus on this truth. Christ lives. Cling to the rock. The victory is won. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Believe it for Jesus' sake. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to rise, and at this time we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God.
having heard the word proclaimed. Let us pray for ourselves, for all the faithful, and for all people as they have need. For all people that they may have faith in Christ and heed the voice of God calling them by his word. For the church, that the people of God may pursue righteousness with peace and joy in their hearts. And for all pastors in their ministry of the word and sacraments. And for all vocations to the ministry. The lives of God's people may rebound to the praise and glory of our Lord and Savior. Lord, in your mercy, for our president, congress, governor, and all civic leaders in their pursuit of peace and unity, for all judges and magistrates in their pursuit of justice with mercy, and for those who protect us from violence and preserve order here and everywhere. Lord, in your mercy, for all noble professions, and for the flourishing of the arts and music, for favorable weather and the fruits of the earth, and for those unemployed, the poor, the homeless, the hungry, and all people in need. Lord, in your mercy. For all families and children, single adults and youth, for those who teach and those who learn, that they may advance in wisdom and grace, for the catechumens and those who teach the faith to them. Lord, in your mercy. For victims of disaster and for those stricken by illness or infirmity, for the aged and infirm, as well as those in nursing homes and assisted living facilities, for those who grieve the loss of those whom they love, and for those who meet with sudden death, and those also who are in need of healing. We remember David Patterson, Tony Hammond, the family of Mike Hurley, and the family of Tom Rappahart. Lord, in your mercy, for the work of God's kingdom in this place, for our faithful support of the church and the renewal of our parish life through the means of grace, for our fellowship this day, and indeed partaking of the life-giving body and blood of Christ, for our growth in grace, that we may attain to the full stature of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Be merciful to us, O Lord, and hear our prayers. Grant to us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be led into all truth and be steadfast in confessing Christ. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated for the instrumental offertory. 